Okay, so continuing. Uh, so what we aim to do uh, today is basically work out the algebra to prove that the fluctuations in the number of particles, the statistical mechanics uh, quantity, which was not there in thermodynamics. Now, this measurement, uh, having an idea of the fluctuations the number of particles and how are you going to even measure it, right? But using statistical mechanics, you can put it in a in a form uh, which deals with the average number of particles and you have that an, an idea of that, KBT, isothermal compressibility, which you can measure in the lab and volume per particle. If you know the total volumes and the average number of particles, then you know the volume per particle. So these are all quantities which are very accessible thermodynamically and the point of showing this derivation is that this statistical quantity n square by n average square uh, can be written down uh, in such a form, which is easily accessible. So you know in your room, if you know your kappa and v by n and kbt, of course, and average number of particles, even if you, if you suppose you use your ideal gas, then you know what is the value of n square minus n average in your, your room, right? Uh, to do so, so now it's a bit of algebra and it's taken from Huang, section 7.374.4, something like that. Uh, just to remind you that in Huang, uh, they use E for the free energy, uh, for writing the free energy. And the canonical partition function uh, is, is typed as capital Q in Wong, in case I you read it, and I encourage you to read it, absolutely. So the first thing we are going to show um, as we proceed towards this expression is n square minus n average square can be written as z del del z, which is the same as one upon uh, del del beta mu. Yeah, so like del del beta mu is the same as z del del z. Um, so you can write it as Z del del Z, Z, Z del del Z, which means a double derivative with respect to beta mu, uh, log of the grand canon canonical partition function. And showing that is extremely easy uh, because uh, what you have is, um, if you have to calculate n square average, what you would do is take over, sum over all possible number of particles, the number of, the quantity you want to measure, in that particular microstate, which is ni square, that's the quantity you want to measure, and you're going to sum uh, and that into so ni actually the probability that your system will have ni particles depends upon fugacity to the power ni and uh, the canonical partition function with ni, and the denominator is z grand canonical, right? So this is the most general expression. Now you have to get Ni um, uh, from the grand canonical partition function. Now, of course, if you do a derivative with respect to Z del del Z, which is the same as uh, doing a derivative with respect to beta mu, right? Uh, because Z has actually e to the power, it's nothing like e to the power beta mu Ni. So then you are gonna get, get Ni out uh, and that's exactly what is being done. So if you do that twice, uh, you will get uh, Ni square. So Z del del Z, Z del del Z twice and double twice acting on uh, this quantity, this quantity. And there is a summation here. And I go from zero to infinity. Uh, uh, the same is here, right? Uh, that will give you Ni square. So the quantity and the, and the sum over different uh, so, so there is already a sum over different microstates here because you are, here you are doing the uh, canonical partition function, right? So, but the probability of accessing that microstate is z to the power ni canonical partition function with ni upon zgc. So when you do that, so you take this uh, z z uh, del del z z del del z out of the summation. What you have is uh, this is the partition, uh, this is the grand canonical partition function divided by the GC. Uh, so, so this has been written as this one by Z GC is written here. And uh, you have a double, uh, double operator acting on Z GC, which when you 
actually operate upon it, which means you take del Z of Z and then you get Z into del Z GC this. And uh, when del del Z operates upon this and Z is out, then you have Z square, Z GC and uh, yeah, double derivative of Z GC with respect to fugacity. Note here, the curly one is this. This one has been made curly to indicate fugacity. Right? So this is uh, e to the power beta mu, right? So, so, yeah. So now what we do is actually calculate. So here we showed that n square can be written in this manner. We are aiming to show this. So we start from the right hand side of the equation uh, and actually operate z del del z z del del z upon log of the grand canonical partition function. And if we actually do the differentiation, which means uh, so if you if del del z of log this thing is z g c right because this is grand canonical partition function del z g c del z right and you basically all that I have done is this operates on once z once on z g c and so on and so forth right so here you will get two terms so here z and this is uh del del Z is operating on this and 1 by ZGC and del Z GC del Z sits here. Now, when this del del Z is operating upon these two terms, right? So this is operating on this term here and on this term here. So you get these three different terms. This you can identify as average number of particle because I, you know what is the average number of particle z del del z of uh, del z gc so that you get twice so this is this you associate with an average square and these two terms if you look carefully and you work it out carefully is the same as n squares so these two you identify uh, this you identify this you identify. So then you what you get is n square minus n average square is this expression because that's what you showed. But now what is that GC? It is PV by KBT. Right? So this and this I'm writing it as del del beta mu, del del beta mu. And when you operate upon it, right, temperature is fixed, volume uh, uh, so is basically uh, looking at a system of volume V. So what you get is essentially del two P del mu two. So that's what. You, so so now your aim is to calculate this. Why? Because we are finally after uh, getting a uh, expression. We are after getting this expression uh, for the fluctuations of particles. So we first got this expression and wrote it down as del 2 p del mu chemical potential square right so this is what we got but pressure is a tangible quantity now we have to re-express this term in terms of other uh, quantities right because how will you measure chemical potential in an experiment well there might be methods but can you uh, can you write it in in terms of even simpler terms so to do that we note that the chemical potential is del F del N, when the uh, reservoir volume is the entire volume of the system plus reservoir, so V equal to VR, or VR equal to V if you like, and del F del V is N equal to NR, the total number of particles. So these are the two quantities. Now we are writing the free energy uh, in terms of N particles, which there I mean N particles in the system, and uh, this is the free energy this is the free energy per particle, right? So F is N into free energy per particle. And then this chemical potential can be written as del del N of N into AB, 
right? And when you operate that, you get AB plus N del A del N. So this is capital N, total number of particles, whereas this is free energy per particle. So instead of that, this you write in terms of del A del V, where V is the volume per particle, and del V del N. Now, this is volume per particle. This is the total number of particles. When you change the total number of particles, how much is the volume per particle going to change? Right? And that you can do this differentiation and that you get as 1 minus, minus 1 by n squared by capital V. Right? And this is uh, this is del A del V. How much the free energy change, uh, per particle change if you change the volume per particle? And so this chemical potential, this chemical potential can be written as the free energy per particle in a volume density, I mean volume per particle small v, which is the same as saying n particles in capital V, minus v del A del V, right? Because this v by n, so this n square, one of the n cancels and then you get uh, v by n, which is the small v. So we are writing chemical potential in terms of the free energy per particle. Moreover, we can also write, see if this free energy is can be written as number of particles into free energy per particle to get pressure. We are doing a del del V, right? Now to do this V, what we do is this capital V is number of particles into volume per particle. And this is the same as this, the consequence of which we can also get pressure as minus del del V volume per particle. So if you change the volume per particle, a small amount, how much is the free energy change per particle? And that is a measure of the pressure, right? It is writing the same thing, except that you uh, on both sides, you have essentially divided, uh, so in the numerator and the denominator, you have divided by N. So you've got free energy per particle and free energy uh, and the volume per particle. So that's all that we have done. You have rewritten it uh, where you have divided by N in the numerator and denominator. And on the other hand, you have written chemical potential in terms of the free energy per particle, volume per particle, del A del V. Now see, this del A del V is also appearing here. So you, have a re you are slowly trying to get a relation between P and mu in terms of accessible quantities because your aim is to finally calculate del 2 P del mu 2. So that's where you are heading. So now this uh, chemical potential, hi, I'm recording. And this chemical potential is uh, uh, basically can be written as uh, energy. So I've rewritten that expression. Now I'm taking a derivative of the chemical potential with uh, respect to the volume per particle, then that can be written as now, this was the expression, you are taking a derivative with respect to, so this is del A del V, you, it is operating on V and giving you minus del A del V and then V del 2A del V2. So this is the change in chemical potential with V. So you get this expression. Meanwhile, this pressure del A del V, you know, you finally need del P del mu and you actually need del 2 P del mu too. That you are writing as del P del V into del V del mu. Now this del V del mu, you are, so this is, this is the thing that you had. This you are writing it as, I mean, you are just inverting this, right? Because it's a partial derivative and uh, so that's a partial derivative. And this P, you are substituting from here. So, so this del V del mu, you are substituting from here. This, you're substituting this pressure, you're substituting from here. And when you work out the algebra, all that you get, del P del mu, is nothing but one upon volume per particle, right? Now, if you take a double derivative, now it is very simple to take a double derivative. You do del del mu of one by V, right? And this you convert as del del V 
and del V del mu because finally you have this. Now del V del mu. Now del V del mu. Uh, do you have an expression? Yes, you have an expression for del V del mu here. Right? You have a del V del mu here. So that you put in this expression you have minus 1 by V square which is coming from here and you substituted the other expression. So what you finally get is 1 by V cube del del V of the energy per particle change in volume per particle. Right? Now this del A del V can be written as pressure. That's exactly what you do because this del del V is del P del V. So you have this quantity. Right? Now I'll remind you that the isothermal compressibility is 1 by V del V del P. So how much does volume change when you change the pressure? And if you increase the pressure, the volume actually decreases. Hence, KT comes with a minus sign. Right? So del 2 P del mu 2, you're going to substitute this del P. Yeah, you know, you have this del V del. So you're going to substitute here. So you had n square minus n average square. This was the relation. So you're going to substitute here. So as a consequence, you are going to get KBT, right? So, so basically you are getting KT here. You just check out the, so you just careful in putting all the terms and all that you will get is n KBT isothermal compressibility into volume per particle. So that's all that is there to there. But the reason I discuss this in greater detail is what I want to show you, uh, though we are not going to derive it in general, that in different cases, when we are doing canonical ensemble, when we are doing uh, grand canonical ensemble, when we were doing uh, magnetism and so on and so forth, you have, you have a set of relation for the fluctuations, which is n square minus an average square, which I just showed uh, is here. You have the average number of particles, KBT, the isothermal compressibility into the volume per particle. Energy fluctuations could be shown as KBT square into CV, which could be written as KBT square into uh, CV0, which is the heat capacity at constant volume per particle into N. So this quantity. So this fluctuation increases with the number of particles, but relative fluctuations is square. So square root of this, which means you would also get a square root here by the total energy of the system that would go down as one by root 10. If you, you already have an explicit n bar here. So if you take the square root of this, which means it would come out with square root and that by the total number the fluctuations, the relative fluctuations divided by n, you would again go as 1 by root 10. And here, similarly, m square minus m average square. This chi is susceptibility, which is the change in magnetization. Uh, when you switch on a small magnetic field as b tends to 0, that susceptibility. Now, if you have more number of particles, you're going to have more value of the magnetization. This, this quantity itself, again, is proportional to the number of particles. And again, the fluctuations in magnetism and, and magnetic moment divided uh, so the relative fluctuations divided by M goes as one by root N. So that's one thing to take home as that all these fluctuations of various quantities, which we had no access to, uh, which we had no access to in uh, thermodynamics. Uh, first of all, they're all going, the fluctuations uh, actually decrease, or oh, sorry, the fluctuations increase with N. Relative fluctuations, Compared with the base level of the energy of the system, the total number of particles of the system, the magnetization of the system, as you go on increasing the system size as n increases, the relative fluctuation decreases. The fluctuations increases as n, right? Um, so this is the variance, and SD is a measure uh, of the fluctuation. So that, that, that increases as n. The other thing I wanted to show um, or wanted to talk about, though it would be proved in the statistical mechanics class, there is here these quantities like which are difficult to, I mean, it's you can always calculate it, 
if you can calculate the grand canonical partition function. But these quantities, fluctuations in different quantities, which are much more difficult to measure, are always re related to a response function. And I will tell you what is the response function. But here you note that n square, and so these fluctuations, n square minus an average square is related to the isothermal compressibility. What is the isothermal compressibility? This is an equilibrium property. On the other hand, here this kT is, if we change the pressure, what is the relative change in volume? So there's a one by V here, remember? What is the relative change in volume when you change the pressure? That is what is relative. So you're changing something, you're changing an external environment and the response to this of the system to this change in environmental parameter, this is an intrinsic variable P, uh, that quantity is giving you, and of course, n bar and kBT is giving you a measure of the fluctuations of the system. Similarly here, Cv, so this is calculated at a fixed temperature. You have an X system in equilibrium and you're calculating its energy fluctuations. But that is related in terms of KBD square into CV. And what is CV? You are changing a system parameter to temperature. That's again an intrinsic qu quantity. And the amount of change in energy, when you change energy being a macroscopic uh, in extrinsic quantity, it depends upon the number of particles. Similarly, this quantity, this volume, again, depended upon uh, the, so del V del P, right? So V, the relative volume, right? So so here again, this is a CV, a change in energy and changing temperature. So that's a response of the system to a change in external conditions. And similarly, here M square minus M average square is related to del M del B, that which is the susceptibility. What is susceptibility? You are change, so this is calculated in absolute. This is calculated in absence of magnetic field. There's a fluctuation of magnetism in equilibrium of a system. But here, that fluctuation is related. So when you are changing the external B field of the system, you switch on a small B field. And what is the change in magnetization? So if you can measure that, if you can calculate susceptibility, if you can measure susceptibility, then you are having an access to a microscopic quantity, which is m square minus m average square. In each of these cases, you see that n, this fluctuation of variance is related to isothermal compressibility, change in pressure, change in volume, relative change in volume with pressure. This is related, this fluct, the variance in energy is related to CV, the change in energy with an intrinsic temperature, the quantity te temperature. And here, the fluctuation or the variance in magnetization is related to when you are changing an intrinsic parameter here, it being magnetic field, what is the change in the magnetization? So this similarity uh, in this uh, look of relating fluctuations with a response function uh, is not an accident. It's actually the consequence of something more deeper called the fluctuation dissipation theorem. So in this lecture, I'm just introducing the term fluctuation dissipation theorem. Uh, however, its proof um, will be discussed in STATMEC2. But at least those who are not uh, taking STATMEC2, at least you have heard the term fluctuation dissipation theorem. At least if you have listened to the lectures, of course, if you don't listen, that's, uh, that's not my problem. But if you have listened to the prob uh, lectures, you would know that fluctuations of a quantity, the statistical quantity can be obtained. It was expressed using statistical mechanics uh, in terms of certain response functions, which are relatively easy to measure in the lab. And of course, in each KBT is sitting here, which means the fluctuations are, are, are going to increase if you increase uh, KBT, and the variance is going to increase with increase in KBT. Here it's even KBT squared, and so on and so forth. So that's what all that I want to say uh, in this uh, lecture. And uh, that's, uh, well, we are going to keep on using grand canonical partition function uh, in the next lectures. But here, I'm going to end here. So, so.